What do compressors actually do to the signal? Well, when you record a performance, let's say you're recording vocals, it's very unlikely that all of your vocals are going to be in the same dynamic range. For instance, you'll probably be louder in the chorus than you would be in the verse. That's just generally how it goes. The chorus usually comes up, it has a little bit more energy. The verse is a little bit lower, it's getting you to the next chorus, right? If you didn't use compression, or if, if engineers didn't use compression in recordings that you're used to hearing, it just wouldn't be as pleasing to the ear because we don't actually want to hear a signal that's jumping around dynamically. When we are listening back on nice speakers or in headphones, we want it to actually be even. We don't want it to be like really, really, really quiet and then be really, really loud throughout the song. We want to have a consistent listening experience so that we're not distracted by this dynamic information. We just want to be singing our favorite song. We just want to be into the sound itself. We want to have an emotional response from listening. We don't want to be jostled around in our headphones. Now, even again, if you are if you're listening to avant-garde free jazz, you still don't want it to be dynamically shooting around in the decibel range. You want it to be an even listening experience, even though the, the material might be totally crazy and without form and without harmony or even melody. And maybe it doesn't have rhythm either. That doesn't matter. In a recording, we still want the listening experience to be even. Compression allows us to take incoming audio signals and something that would otherwise be dynamically kind of all over the place, let's say our, our full spectrum of dynamics goes to 30, goes to plus 30 dB and minus 30 dB. Let's say in one performance, it could be even a bass guitar or anything. Let's say that some of the transients and some of the notes are at 18 decibels and the other ones are at 6 and some are at 10 and some are at 12 and 7. Well, we need to even that out so the listening experience is more consistent and therefore more enjoyable and we can focus on the music and not focus on the fact that it sounds like the signal is jumping around. So what compressors actually do is they sort of listen or detect incoming transient levels and depending on where you set the parameters, they will attenuate certain signals that pass the threshold. 